Welcome to part 8 of the Godot top-down tank battle tutorial game. This time we're going to finish up with the explosions, make the enemy tanks explode when we kill them, and add a little bit of visual effects to the shooting with a muzzle flash animation. Alright, let's get started. So I started out this time by going to the tank master scene, and I've added a couple of things. I've added a sprite attached to the turret called flash. This is going to be a muzzle flash effect that is going to play when the tank fires. It will look like you know, flame coming out of the muzzle of the tank when the bullet comes out. And I've also added an animation player to make that uh, animation effect happen. And then I've also attached an explosion scene. I've taken the explosion scene and instanced it here because I want to have the tanks explode when they are destroyed, uh, just like the bullets do. And couple of things here. So on the explosion, I've chosen the fire animation instead of the smoke one. So we have a different one for that. Also on the flash, go ahead and set the region to enabled so that when you customize this on the individual tanks, you won't have to go and choose that each time. So this is going to apply to all tanks. So the animations that we make are going to do the same thing with the flash sprite we can just use a different image on them to get a different uh, visual effect. Two new animations here. The first one I'm going to call init. And this one we're going to set it to autoplay. And what that means is this is the this animation is going to be used to set the any of the properties that we're animating to their initial state. So for example, on the flash sprite we're going to take its modulate property and put the alpha all the way to zero so that the flash can't be seen. And then we will add that as a keyframe. And that's all we need in there for now. When we add other effects and things, we might have other properties that we need to add here. Okay, and now we're going to add another animation. This one is going to be the muzzle flash effect. And I don't want this to take one second. I only want it to take 0.15 seconds. It's going to be a nice short animation. And I'm going to set the steps to 0.01 so we have a little bit more of a uh, control over where we can set the keyframes. And let me zoom this out so we can see the whole thing. So this is going to have two tracks on it. First we're going to set the modulate. So let's set the alpha back to maximum and add that as a keyframe. Then we're going to move out to around here, almost all the way to the end, and we're going to hit another keyframe. So it's going to stay with a full alpha there, and then at the end, we're going to quickly ramp down to invisible again. So it'll be visible, and then become invisible. And then the other thing we're going to do is we're going to change its, change its scale. So in the transform scale, I want to do a couple of things here. I want it to look like it's flame that's exploding out of the turret and then shrinks down. So we're going to start with the scale being small. It's going to get big, and then it's going to shrink again. So I'm going to set the scale to 0.5 and start that on my first keyframe. And then somewhere about here, about there, we're going to set the scale to 1.5. And that will be that. And then about here, where we are shrinking down again, we're going to set it to 1. And then it can remain that size during the end of it. Okay, so it's really hard to tell what that's going to do, so we need to add a, an actual image there and play the animation so you can see what it'll look like. Okay, so now if we go over to our player tank, we can add the image here and choose the texture region. I'm using this uh, orange one. Let me zoom over here. I'm using this orange one here. Make sure that you use pixel snaps so you don't get any of the pixels from the adjacent shapes. They're all packed in there pretty tight. So now we can see 
the image there. Now we need to move it so that it's going to be at the tip of the of the muzzle, but we also need to change its offset. And the reason for that is because we're scaling. When we scale it in the animation, it's going to scale centered on the center of the sprite. So it's going to scale in equally in all four directions. I want it to scale from here, like it's coming out from the end. So we're going to change the offset about like that. And then we're going to change the position, maybe 60 pixels. So maybe a little bit smaller than that, 55. OK, so now it's at the tip of the cannon. And if we shoot, we should see it play. OK, that's the effect we're going for. So when I shoot, you can see it scaling upwards and then back down again and fading out at the end. Now, the other thing we added to this tank scene was the explosion. And so I want this explosion to play when the tank is, uh, it, it, when it dies, when it runs out of health. Right now, when it runs out of health, we're just doing Q free. But we created this explode function. This is where we're going to put the code to do that. So what do we want to happen when it explodes? Well, there's a few things we need to do. We need to t take its collision shape and disable it. Because we don't want more uh, additional bullets hitting the additional bullets hitting the explosion while it's playing. Uh, we'll set alive equal to false, which makes the physics process stop running so it won't move anymore. Uh, we're going to hide the turret and the body. And body, because right, we don't want to see them. We're going to see the explosion. And then we're going to play the explosion. So we need to do two things. We need to show the explosion because it's hidden right now. And we need to explosion.play. Now, that will play the explosion. And then when the explosion finishes is when we want the tank to actually be destroyed. So we will connect the animation finished signal here. And when the explosion animation finishes, that's when we're going to queue free. So let's go over to the map scene and try and blow up an enemy tank and see if that works. You notice I already added the muzzle flash to the enemy tanks as well, which was the same. There we go. Same process as adding it to the player. I just used a different image. I used the yellow one instead of the orange one. And if you want to, you can go over to the enemy tank and you can scale the explosion to whatever size you feel is going to be good for the size of the tank. You can unhide it here and see that's what it's going to look like when it explodes. So I think that'll be all right. A little bit bigger, 1.5. That'll do it for this time. Uh, it was a little bit shorter this time around. Uh, I've been really busy with the end of the school year happening, so uh, I'll hopefully be able to ramp back up in speed in the next couple of weeks. So I hope you enjoyed it and learned a little bit about how to do some basic animation effects. We'll be doing a lot more of those as time goes on to give some other visual effects as well. And coming up, we're going to talk about adding obstacles and uh, pickup items to the game. Thanks for watching. See you next time.